It's been a busy summer with a couple of other projects taking up my time. First off was fitting a variable speed drive to my milling machine which turned out to be one of those jobs that just grew and grew. Even now, although it's working and usable, I do need to make a change to the belt drive, but that can wait for another day. I also restarted work on this old motor guzzy project that has been hidden away in my shed for too long. My original plan was to turn it into a cafe racer, but I've long since lost interest in that so I've decided to restore it back to original condition and have been busy welding back the bits of frame that I previously removed. Those projects aside, it's high time I finished off the brake gear on this loco and to do so I just need to make the brake nut adjusters and the brake pull rods. I'll start with the brake nut adjusters there are two at 17.5mm length for the pull rods and one at 28.6mm length for the handbrake. I've covered off all the various machining operations in other videos in the series, so I'll keep the narration to a minimum. The pull rods are quite long at 467mm, on each there are three sections threaded at 2BA which align with the brake beams and the rear end of each rod is threaded at 532 by 32 For the 2BA sections I use some threaded bar which I face off to length and then drill and tap to 7BA at each end to a depth of about 8mm. For the non-threaded sections I use some 4mm round bar and again turn to length and drill and tap at 7BA. At the end of the rearmost section I cut the 532 by 32 TPI thread. To join the sections together I use some Loctite 648 with small lengths of 7BA threaded bar. I do this in a lathe to help ensure that I don't end up with crooked rods. I was originally going to solder the sections together but following a discussion with William in the comments on part 50 on the choice of whether to solder or Loctite I've decided to give the latter a go. With the rods fully assembled I bend a slight offset at the rear end to align with the brake shaft. Assembly, although straightforward, is a fiddly exercise which requires the removal of the brake hangers to remove the brake beams. Luckily I don't have any of the motion parts fitted as they would all need to come off. Each of the beams in the associated nuts are then slid onto the rods before reinstalling on the hangers. The rods are then connected to the brake shaft via the adjusters. The brake cylinder is then fixed to the frames and also connected to the brake shaft. Because I've not yet made the running boards I can't fit the brake column and handle so I'll need to come back to those later. 
The various pins you can see are the same as the ones I made in part 54 and they are held in place with 1mm diameter split pins. By applying some compressed air to the inlet of the brake cylinder I am able to check its operation but I don't have a ball in the drain valve so you can hear it passing air. I am now beginning to run out of parts to make that don't require the boiler so I really need to get my head around starting on that. Thanks for watching.